good morning, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chito Asinto, and the rest of uh, the ISOC leadership for the invitation and the honor of um, sharing my thoughts with, uh, with um, fellow uh, practitioners and advocates for information security and uh, data privacy uh, present here today. I think, um, yeah, I think everyone here agrees you know, that organizations, um, businesses, and even individuals are looking to provide uh, services, online services to the public. Uh, we'll consider doing that uh, via mobile apps first uh, before considering uh, delivering those same services via the, the desktop uh, browser. Uh, it wasn't always this way, you know, but, it, um, but there's no denying that for some time now and will be for the foreseeable future, uh, the decision to go mobile first is a de uh, default decision. A mobile first uh, strategy is a critical management uh, decision uh, to prioritize the design of its online services, UI and UX, to revolve around the mobile platform, a mobile device over the traditional desktop. Uh, now, why is that? No? There are a number of benefits to going mobile first. First is the sheer size of the target market and its exponential growth. Uh, according to the latest Nokia study of the subject, uh, there are 5.22 billion uh, unique uh, mobile users globally. Uh, in terms of media consumption, 70% of all media available online gets to be consumed via mobile devices. And as a tradi uh, transactional platform, at least uh, from the retail space, 80% no? of users uh, use a mobile device for purchases online, while 87% use mobiles for banking transactions. At the fact that the most popular online services, uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, etc., are accessed via mobile devices, providing a halo effect no? uh, on all other apps, benefiting from the propensity of people in, on using uh, mobile devices. Uh, going mobile first also allows companies to address the desire of its uh, clients for personalized services. Having a native app uh, compared to the user simply uh, being invited to visit the website provides an effective way of uh, shaping customer experience as they navigate through your services. Lastly, uh, delivery of services via mobile apps provides companies with more ways of generating insights into user behavior over time. Uh, this leads to data-driven uh, decisions, which in turn help desi uh, designers refine personalization and create a more effective customer experience. So it's no surprise uh, that BPI has decided early on, you know, on the wisdom of taking on the mobile-first uh, approach and has included it as a, as, an, uh, as a management imperative in its digitalization push. Uh, this approach can be seen in, the, in our uh, introduction of uh, new products and services, constant revitalization of existing product lines, uh, customer acquisitions, uh, shaping of customer experiences across its business and product lines. Uh, tempering any enthusiasm, though, uh, for a headlong rush towards a mobile-centric uh, strategy is the ever-growing toxicity of the uh, threat landscape. No? Cyber attacks have become the norm, but uh, especially for uh, the mobile platform, it had reached a fevered pitch. Uh, the very ubiquity of uh, mobile devices have made them enticing targets for their attackers. Last year saw a tripling of the share of backing Trojans among newly discovered malware. Uh, these malwares are seen to have uh, the capabilities that we have seen before. Uh, key logging capabilities, use of overla uh, transparent overlays uh, to capture login uh, uh, credentials, and harvesting of Google Authenticator codes uh, by abusing uh, accessibility service uh, privileges. Uh, second, again, something expected that comes from the sheer dominance of mobile use is the commensurate share in fraud instances. 68% of all digital fraud is perpetrated via mobile. 59% uh, of those uh, happening via mobile apps, while uh, versus 9% via browsers. Third, the proliferation of rogue apps, 
uh, or apps that impersonate legitimate apps to support uh, phishing attacks. The persistence of rogue apps uh, comes in large part from the uh, continued propensity of users in downloading from third-party sites, thereby bypassing the security found in official app stores. Lastly, we have seen uh, increasingly the ability of uh, threat actors in bypassing app store defense mechanisms themselves. Uh, this include a cruder approach of uh, publishing rogue apps through compromised uh, developer accounts and the use of URL uh, shortening services in app linkouts to hide the true malicious URLs that could have been detected by app scanners uh, uh, otherwise. No. So mitiga uh, and mitigation of these threats is not helped by the virtual lack of malware protection in mobile devices. Uh, essentially providing attackers with open, target-rich environments. All right, so responding to the threats, no, however compelling the risks, uh, is typically not without friction, unfortunately. Uh, there, there exists, as usually is the case, the, for organizations a disconnect uh, between the objectives of channel, uh, product, and even developers on one side, and uh, security risk compliance uh, people on the other. You may have, uh, we have shared um, imperatives of agility, speed to market, resource management, primacy of customer experience, and budget control on one hand. And on the other, you have requirements of threat mitigation, controls visibility and monitoring, and demonstrable uh, compliance to relevant laws and regulations, not the least of which our privacy and BSP prescriptions. Uh, the need to reconcile these uh, seemingly incompatible uh, desires made more acute by the stakes involved. No? With the aforementioned uh, mobile-centric digitalization push, there is a need to continuously churn out uh, services, all the while working on a challenging platform that is uniquely vulnerable to attacks. Uh, these complicate efforts to comply with evolving legal and regulatory requirements. So uh, given these imperatives, BPI has adopted a bolt-on approach on protecting uh, mobile, key mobile applications through a, a, a new security framework. Essentially, this uh, approach abstracts the security layer uh, from the functional and allows for the independent progression of these two domains. Uh, that is, it allows for uh, the agile deployment of technical controls uh, as dictated by the threat landscape and the requirements of the prevailing regulatory regime while permitting app development to develop according to its own cadence. The technology uh, also provides visibility over and the ability to measure the effectiveness of uh, specific control objectives. Uh, this, at least for the moment, has allowed the bank to marry the requirements for security and compliance with the aims of innovation delivered through superior customer service. On a more conventional security framework, BPI has adopted an open API security framework. Uh, with this framework, uh, we are able to determine whether identified threats are addressed by mapping security controls that were uh, designed uh, to mitigate uh, those threats. Next, we have established uh, secure coding standards with tools for static code scanning. We also ensure uh, that our mobile app codes programs are obfuscated to prevent studied exploitation. Uh, next, we enforce um, baseline security controls across uh, different information security domains that, re that we require from mobile apps, in fact, for any application system for that matter. Uh, any identified gap should be risk assessed on the need for compensating controls. We have also updated our uh, QA processes to include dedicated security testing, uh, along with the usual VAPT for app-based systems, covering not just the uh, apps at the back end. Uh, we also include uh, supporting infrastructure, no, for such as uh, API brokers and gateways. 
along with these um, uh, a number of our services, uh, including, of course, uh, those that are delivered via mobile apps, are run on systems and uh, services that are hosted and managed by third-party service providers. In compliance with um, various BSP regulations, we perform due diligence on service providers, especially as it pertains to their uh, capability to ensure the security for information assets, from governance to process, technical uh, infrastructure, resiliency, etc. Next, in addressing rogue apps, uh, we subscribe to multiple service providers that scour the net for us in detecting to detect uh, these rogue apps, uh, along with brand impersonation and social media sites, and run-of-the-mill uh, phishing sites. And as uh, important as these controls and services, it's imperative uh, that we have a strong uh, project management uh, governance that ensures that management and the board have visibility over projects, uh, especially including mobile apps. And notwithstanding all of these technical controls, no, all of the processes that we have invested in and uh, built into the services, the most important component as we all know, no, in all these defenses remains to be the user, okay, the one that's using online services. Uh, a click on a malicious link, uh, a careless uh, response to a vision call uh, will render useless layers of technical uh, defenses. And to address these concerns, uh, BPA runs and maintains a robust uh, awareness program which includes frequent posts on social media. Uh, on uh, subjects such as uh, fraud prevention, infographics on the latest modus operandi on phishing, uh, smishing and phishing attacks, and the protection of personal data. We're proud to share that the uh, hashtag cybersecurity tips, the bank cyber and fraud awareness uh, program, had, in, had earned in, uh, recognitions uh, both local, which includes your Quill and Anvil Awards, and international, like the Stevie Awards. Uh, the awareness program includes our ongoing uh, collaboration with GMA7, which includes or which features rather a number of dramatized uh, PSAs, public service announcements, to help in more effectively uh, getting the message across to a wider audience in a more relatable format. We have also ramped up our collaborations with gov uh, various government agencies with the aim of uh, contributing to capacity building for cybersecurity in law enforcement and judiciary and in the judiciary department. We have also taken up advocacies uh, in strengthening anti-cybercrime laws through legislation and uh, executive policies. And uh, that's the end of my presentation. Again, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to be here with you today and share some thoughts on how we uh, uh, share in uh, contributing to cybersecurity in the Philippines. Thank you.